Good morning. My name is Robert Mizey, and welcome to my continuing series on the international tax provisions in the Internal Revenue Code. Today we're going to talk about sort of a fun topic. We're going to talk about an issue very relevant and probably the hottest issue around for international athletes and entertainers. The issue is whether the endorsement income they receive is a royalty or a service fee. Now, why does this matter? It matters because everybody would prefer to have foreign source income. U.S. athletes and entertainers may pay tax on their worldwide income, but they receive a credit on their pre they, for foreign taxes paid on foreign source income. So they get that credit that's limited by the amount of foreign source pre-credit U.S. tax on foreign source income. So they want as much of their income characterized as foreign source as possible, even though they pay tax on all worldwide income. On the other hand, foreign athletes and entertainers only pay tax on U.S. source income. So they want their income only characterized as foreign source income, so they don't have to pay any U.S. tax. Here's where the rubber hits the road. There are different sourcing rules for royalties and intangibles. Royalties are sourced by the location of the use of the intangible, whereas service fees are sourced by the location of the performance of the services. Without further review, you might think, aren't they the same? No, they aren't the same. So let's go to the facts in Chief Counsel Field Service Advice 1999-1150 which, believe it or not, I was the principal author. In that fact, we had non-resident alien who received payment from a cola company for wearing a patch in a European tennis tournament. In this hypothetical, we're going to say it's the French Open. Now, what would be non-resident alien tennis players' argument? Non-resident alien would argue I'm performing a service of wearing that patch. Consequently, it's foreign source income. Services are sourced by where performed. The United States can't touch any of it. What was the ultimate decision in that field service advice? The rationale was, hey, NRA is really associating his image and his body with the cola company. As a result, that image is being beamed around the globe, much of it to U.S. Television, television sets, and therefore that intangible property, his image is, with the cola patch, is being used in the United States, and therefore is U.S. source income. Now, I was very much uh, at the lower end of the, of the uh, managerial structure at the IRS. And consequently, I did whatever my managers told me, and it didn't go into the, the field service memorandum. But the reason they decided, so bizarre, they said, well, NRA could still receive a royalty if he died at center court at Roland Garros at the French Open. On the other hand, if he dies, he can't perform a service fee. And it looks like under the contract, he gets paid either way. So it looks like it's a royalty. Now, personally, I think it's a royalty. But I don't ascribe to their dead person theory because, quite frankly, if he died at center court, the last thing Cola Company would want is their patch being shown on his sleeve. So, but I think, logically, the Cola Company is not paying him for the service of wearing that patch. Only the 15,000 people see it at Roland Garros? No, people see it worldwide. They're paying for it to be seen worldwide. Therefore, I think it's a royalty. Now, there is some good news. We can actually use this argument for, let's say, a U.S. tennis player. Let's call her Pluto. And Pluto wears a patch for Cola Company on her tennis dress at the U.S. Open, which coincidentally is broadcast worldwide, both in the United States and abroad. What's Pluto's argument going to be? Pluto's going to argue 
in the reverse of the previous situation, that it's a royalty because it's broadcast around the world. Part of that income is foreign source income. What's the IRS going to argue? The IRS is going to argue that it is indeed a service and it should U.S. source because it's performed in the United States. What's the lesson here? The lesson here is that these are inherently facts and circumstances oriented. You want to look at the contracts as their tax advisor up front. You want to massage the language so that you can get the result you want, whether it's a royalty or whether it's a service fee. Well, thank you for joining me in our continuing series. I look forward to seeing you next time.